welcome back. You know, we do a lot on the channel, but one of the things that I feel like I haven't been able to do with you guys is just to sit and chit chat and talk and share some things that are on my heart. Of course, we do intuitive messages. You know, I'm known for it, I'm good for it. I really feel like that's one of the reasons why it is that I'm here. I do feel like there is a message that, is that I wanna share as far as what 2021 is gonna look like but I wanted to sit with you guys and just check in and ask you guys how you're doing, how you're feeling, what's up. You know, it has been quite a year. Obviously, 2020 has been a doozy for so many. Most of us astrologers, we've been seeing it, feeling it, picking up on it, intuitives and sens sensitives and empaths. We knew something was up before it came and now we're in it, we're in the mix. I think one of the major lessons this year has been about surrender to a certain degree to a certain extent and um, being open to the process while things were getting broken down around us in our government sorry about that you guys um, but yeah it's nothing to provoke fear or to make you lock up because you guys know that I am not a person who encourages being locked up in fear fear is a natural reaction that we as human beings that we have to like stimulus to help us to protect ourselves to get out of a situation that doesn't serve us or that could be threatening to our physical mental emotional spiritual bodies um, so that that there's that that serves that purpose but when it comes to your path when it comes to your purpose your process your heart and your experience here on earth you're not meant to be locked up in fear and when I give information to you guys or when I share a message a vision a prophecy I don't want you guys to take that and lock yourself up in fear I want you to sit with it if it resonates and see how it fits into your life without forcing it without creating a force fit now as we're closing out 2020 there is something really important that it is that I want to share with you guys that the last few days like a week and a half I want to I want to say I have really been feeling called to sit with the divine and kind of close out this year now we don't work on human timetables and human law we're not it, human tables like calendars and time like it doesn't really fit in with you know divine law and divine order it's all about divine's plan and that's not something that we can control we can see it we can I don't want to say predict it but we can pretty much get a general gist of you know what's happening in our lives and what's happening around us but for the most part spirit is gonna move how spirit is gonna move so you know I just been kind of flowing with that lately and being really called to go back to my altar to update my altar these are things that are going on in my personal life and as I'm doing that, I sat with spirit and I sat with my angels, my guides, and I was like, listen, you know, I feel called to work at my altar for myself, what that space looks like. But also, as I'm sitting there, you know, I'm getting this sense of, um, and it's such, a, it's such a blessing, it's such a gift of what 2021 is going to look like, this cycle and the next year, the next 365 days is gonna look like. Again, like this isn't about human tables as far as new year, new me. So we're, when as soon as December 31st, 2020 happens and then we move into January 1st, 2021, this everything's gonna be wiped, the, the slate is gonna be wiped clear. That's not at all what it is that I'm saying. But there is a s certain level of, um, I don't wanna say respect, but consideration for how human beings work with by we are and exiting out or saying goodbye to a certain stage within our lives and then ushering forward into the next one or at least setting intention for the next stage that is that we're entering into some of the lessons that we a lot of the lessons that we learned in 2020 we're definitely gonna be taking into 2021 obviously we knew that um, so that's what it is I'm talking about right now now with that you guys there is something that has been coming through to me and it's um, not troublesome or problematic, but it does feel heavy. And there's this um, message of being super cautious and aware, cognizant um, of who you're listening to, what you're following, what you're doing, what you're absorbing. And the big word for that is consumption. What is that we're consuming? That is a statement all by itself, but deeper than that, spirit is really calling 
for you to understand that you are not meant to just consume. You're not meant to be this parasite that's just taking in and spending money and consuming, consuming, consuming. Tell us what we want next. Tell us what I need next. Tell me how to feel. Tell me what to think. Tell me what to buy. Tell me what to do. It's very, when I say the word consumer, that's what's really standing out to me in 2021 is this idea that human beings, you know, your purpose is not meant to be connected and tied to this idea of consumption. Why this is so important and meaningful is because the more that you consume and the more that you feel like you are called to consume these things, whatever that thing is, whether it be health, health and fitness, I've got to be this idea of I got to be the best version of myself. My physical body has to look like this. So I need this product. I need to do this. I need to do it this way in order to be and attain this one thing. You're a consumer. You're consuming your purpose in your mind energetically now we're, we're talking about energy here your energy connects to it, it disconnects and it connects into the idea that you're a consumer you have to consume so let's say um, on a more superficial level there's things that we it's good to have goals and it's good to want nice things for yourself but not to the point where your ego especially as we're going through this ego breakdown right now I said that before 2021, it's the breakdown of the ego, it's going to be painful. But as your ego, meaning your identity, how you know yourself to be, is getting broken down and you're revealing certain shadow sides within yourself and certain levels of awareness and we're focusing on psychology, we're focusing on subconscious healing, we're focusing on our spiritual selves, um, we're focusing on the wounded child and generational curses, those types of things, we are breaking down the ego. But as that happens, as something is being broken down, there's an openness, a void. Meanwhile, we're focusing our, on our progress and we wanna do better for ourselves, but what we don't wanna do is turn into, okay, well this thing is going to fill the void within my heart, or this thing is going to give me purpose and meaning. So then you end up turning into a consumer in that way, getting all of these things, all of these luxury goods, all of these, and again, there's nothing wrong with wanting nice things for yourself, absolutely, but it doesn't define you. And it shouldn't be that once, if you find yourself getting, gaining, and it's never enough, it's never good enough, you always need more, you've entered into the space of consuming. You're being a consumer, you're, it's parasitic energy. And I don't believe in my spiritual studies that the dark or the light is one good or all bad. All good or all bad, it just is what it is. We have to be very aware and we try to strive for balance. That's the goal. We don't want to have balance, you know, strive for balance and then turn into perfectionism or self-punishment because we can't maintain the status quo. We're spiritual beings, you know, having a human experience. So we do our best to enjoy the process, to learn from the process and surrender to the process and move forward and move on. So it's not meant to be self-punishing. The next thing that is coming through to me when it comes to consuming is those who step into a space where they're focusing on love and intimacy and deeper connection. And what I'm seeing and what the warning is coming from for that is that people are turning that energy of love and, and wanting deeper connection and wanting intimacy into, consumer, in, into consuming all by itself. And how this works is we have music, we have information, we have the media, we have social media, and all of these examples, these visual examples of things telling us and showing, showcasing to us to be sexual, to be sexy, to be intimate without actually being intimate. To, and in the same breath, we are so quick to call each other toxic, to call ourselves toxic, and to cut people out or cut things out. Meanwhile, we're trying to connect and build and move from a space of love. And what ends up happening is that we end up accidentally, our purpose in the strive for love, if we're not focusing the energy within ourselves and the energy of love within ourselves, we keep finding it, consuming it, trying to consume it in external things. So again, there's a disconnect where we disconnect from ourselves and reconnect with something that is outside of ourselves, whether it be a person, whether it be a, a purpose or whatever it is in the effort to have a deeper connection, to have deeper intimacy, to have 
a deeper purpose and meaning in our relationships and our experiences. And I know for some of you guys, a, a small few, you know, my message is going to go right over your head. You're, some of you, some people are going to get triggered. Some people are going to get upset with me. Some people are going to pick me apart or pick apart this message, and that's fine. But I do want to say that, like, one thing, you know, back to the, the the idea of sex, and you know, sex is important, and sex is meant to be intimate and intimately bonding, but. And sexual expression is so important and is also very spiritual. But my concern is this idea in 2021, this image that Spirit is showing me about somehow connecting it to con consumption, where we put ourselves, it's not that we're, we are at a risk of cheapening ourselves, but when we connect our purpose to this sexual thing, we, that's the most intimate thing that we can give and to share is to give someone access to our bodies and to share ourselves with another person in such an intimate way. So when that's not sacred anymore, when that's not cherished, when that's not respected, and when it's not done in a way that is of a higher vibration, that is literally, and it concerns me so deeply, it's literally the last blow that we can experience as human beings in our purpose, in ourself, in our identities. And when that's literally, I don't know why this is the thing that's coming through, but it's literally the last thing that people and lower vibrational energies can take from you. That's coming through so clear. It's literally the last thing that, the last blow that they can have on you because at that point, you're just an object. At that point, you're not even human anymore. You're just a toy. You're just an object. Like you're just a orifice. I know that sounds awful, but legit, it takes away from your purpose, it takes away from your sacredness, it takes away from your special, like your, your sanctity, it takes away from your intimacy, it takes away from your privacy, it just goes so deep. And in 2021, Spirit is really calling you to be observant of the areas of your life where you're allowing yourself to be consumed and the areas of your life where you are consuming because this is the last thing that they can take from you. This is the last blow to your spiritual being before you become a plastic, before you become robotic, before you become a toy, before you become an object. And that in 2021 and 2020, it almost, I really have been saying this for years, years, like over five years, especially with Neptune moving in, moving through Pisces, we have to be very mindful of the very same things that we are meant to use as tools to lift our vibration are the very same things that will be tools to lower our vibration and make us plummet. And I said five, six, seven years ago that there are going to be some people who were, will survive from this. There are so, so many, there will be many people that will thrive from it and become better, become higher spiritual beings, but then there will be people that we will lose. Number one, it's because the level of violation that they are being guided and herded into right now will be a strike against their life. Like it will be, it will work against them. It will hurt them. They won't be able to pick up the pieces after that. They'll need help to pick up the pieces even if they are able to. Or they will get so caught up in the web of this lower vibrational energy. I don't want to call it toxic, even though that's kind of what it is, but we're throwing that word around now. But they'll get so caught up in this lower vibrational energy that it will steer them and herd them into things that will per permanently hurt them, hinder them, or take their lives. It's that serious. Spirit, um, is asking you guys to have really strong discernment to not take what other people are saying me included or any spiritual advisor especially the spirituality community to not take or what people are telling you this is the right way to do it spirit is guiding you to connect with your intuition intuition first and to develop your relationship with the divine with god first and foremost then you'll never have to check in and ask for permission to ask for advice to ask for clarity and counsel and wisdom in something that comes from within you. Spirit, this year, 2020, at the time of you filming this, at the time of me filming this, and you watching this and moving forward, 
you want to prioritize your relationship with your intuition, with yourself, with your higher self, and your relationship with God or the divine so much that, you know, moving forward, you don't need to, you would know right away if something is a vibrational match to you, if something is healthy for you and healing towards you and supportive of you and helping you to thrive, or if it's hindering you and hurting you into a sunken place. All right, there's a few cards that are coming through that I want to share with you guys. Um, okay. So some of the first cards that are jumping out are the Daughter of Knives. So the Page of Swords. We have the Strength card. We have the Queen of Swords. And we also have the Father of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles. With this, you guys, the one thing that's standing out to me with the Queen of Swords and the Strength card and the Page of Swords is the idea of, I don't know why I'm hearing punishment, but I'm also, what I wanna say is boundaries and protection for self-preservation. This means that you are realizing that you can be strong in yourself, be strong in your purpose, be strong in what is right and wrong for you without and you know without being without cutting people cutting people off being um abrasive being energetically attacking and also not being a pushover and not being something that someone and anything or anyone can fall into you so there's a healthy level of this is where i begin this is where I end and that's there's that healthy space between you and I this is really standing out to me because um, if you are taking time out for yourself for your sacred time for your intimate time meaning your intimate time with the divine and spirit you will have you have no worries even as I'm looking at this with the page of swords she's sitting at an altar space of some sort um, and that's what I'm seeing for you guys is you're gonna come to your own truths you are going to come to your own truth. No one can tell you. No matter how much anyone respects me or my messages or, you know, my gifts or anybody else for that matter, you are going to come to your own conclusions. You are going to come to your own answers, your own revelations. They're going to come to you. But the only way that that can happen is if you put down all of the pieces, literally six of pentacles here, two of, two of pentacles, if you put down all the things that is that you're juggling or that you're making more of a priority than your spiritual time and your time with yourself the other thing that's coming through is um, some some people are turning their sacred time their me time their self-care time they're using they're watching people use alcohol grab a glass of wine grab grab substances or whatever or whatever it is that they're using you know these things these substances it substance doesn't have to be just alcohol or drugs it could be whatever it could be a face mask like the most fancy ass expensive face mask self-care time your self ritual your spiritual ritual your spirituality routine doesn't need anything other than for you to disconnect from the external world disconnect from all the outside noise you don't need an oil you don't need you know those things serve their their purpose when it's time for you to use it when it's time for you to anoint yourself when it's time for you to bless and protect yourself but at the end of the day your ritual your routine is something that just means that you disconnect from the noise and reconnect to the peace to the presence of a higher spirit of unconditional love of the energy of the universe and with that, you will get confirmation and clarity and direction on everything that is that you need to everything that is that you need in all areas of your life, from abundance, material abundance and reward, to spiritual abundance and reward, to intellectual you know guidance, information, ideas, people and places and things that you have to go to that you want to go to, things that is that you want to experience. You will be provided for. And all of those things come from you. Look at that. There's so many creatures. I want to say creatures. They're not creatures. There's so many, and I want to say creatures because there's so many different forms that are going to come through to you. I'm seeing all of these people around. We have the 
pen the king of pentacles we have the queen of swords we also have the father of baskets so the king of king of baskets king of cups and these are guides these are your ancestors these are your the, your grandfather your grant your father your mother your grandmother your great grandmother your aunt whomever who is called now to spiritually protect you and to be fierce in their protection over you now more than ever and the way to listen to them the way to hear them not only to ask them for things but to hear them and to learn how to hear their voice and to know that it's their voice without a fraction of a doubt is by developing a relationship with them which means that you commit that time to them the other thing is that your angels I'm really getting called to this reminder that some people don't know what their angels sound like so and it can be really easy to mishear them it can be really easy to think that you're listening to the divine or think that you're listening to an angel or think that you're listening to your ancestor but in reality you're listening to something that is from a lower vibration the way to get past that and to way to discern whether something is for you and protecting you or trying to hurt you is by you going to your altar and creating that sacred space or you going to you know that that spiritual ritual that spiritual routine that is so simple as far like I said you're just putting down all of the all of the excess all of the extra noise all of the things that you're trying to do at one one point all you have to do is put that down and go to a space a quiet space ground yourself center yourself and ask to and ask to speak speak to the divine ask to speak to your angels and your guides and to sit and be still and wait and listen and journal that's all that you need a piece of paper and pen or to write it in your phone if you're watching this video right now you have access to some form of technology or information a tool that you can also use to document your experiences you guys know that I have an apothecary you guys know I do readings and for me to come on here and to tell you that you don't need things you don't need the wisdom of someone else to tell you what you need within yourself should say something it's not to say that those things aren't important because they are don't don't get me wrong I have I use my oil and ice and I work with candles and I'll carry on around a crystal and I'll carry around an amulet in order to protect my energy but the protection is in the intention and it serves its purpose definitely but at the end of the day nothing is more powerful than your will your intention and when you have a vision over your life and you call in what you want to see happen for you or what you're setting intention for and that's the thing too in 20 from now on 2020 and 2021 be very mindful and cautious about the words that is that you're using some of you guys are talking about demons some of you guys are talking about lower energy vibrations you're talking about murder you're talking about gossip you're talking about this bag this thing all these other stuff this external stuff and what you're doing is you're cheapening your energy you are inviting in you know the the lower vibration you're inviting it in you're asking for it you're calling to it whether you realize, realize it or not and the more that you talk about it the more you're finding other people who want to talk to you about that so the two of you guys are just hurting yourselves wow look higher power and poised and the other thing that I the other card that I pulled that I'm not seeing right now but I did have it was the look the tribe we have to look out for each other too that's the goal that's the intention but one of the other cards that I pulled was blessed and what that means is that you guys you know it's just it's honestly it's the message is simple it's about finding your tribe finding your power and making sure that you are in a space where you are always looking for you are always ensuring that what you're doing is in the hand of the divine that is being blessed and protected this means protect your peace this means protect yourself from poisons this means poisons things that we eat things that we think 
things that we are allowing ourselves to hear, things that we're allowing ourselves to say, things that we wear on our bodies, people that we allow into our lives. Do you see how the key is coming from her head right there? From her third eye. That's the key for you. Now let's shuffle quickly from the Divine Feminine. Even as I'm shuffling this, I love tarot, I love oracle, obviously, obviously. But they're just tools at the end of the day. And I'm even concerned, I'm cautious about not relying on them, but using them in this video. Because I don't want you guys, I don't want to encourage you, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I feel I just, I want to be very careful and mindful. I'm always mindful of the energy that I share and the example that is that I'm setting and the words that is I use. I take all of it very seriously. So if I'm talking about this right now and I just happen to be shuffling because I felt called to, I don't want you guys to think that, you know, that's all that we do or that's what I'm, that your, your time, your sacred time is going to always look like shuffling because can I tell you guys what my morning ritual looks like, my morning routine? I legit wake up, I go right outside to my altar, and I sit there, and I just continue to pour out to the universe, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, for all of my blessings, for everything. I, I can go down the list. It literally can go on and on and on. And then after I've expressed my gratitude, not because I feel like I have to, but because I feel obligated to, but because my heart is so full. And then... I'm like, if there's anything that, is that you want to share, <laughs> you know, from my guides to me or from the divine to me, I'm listening. And then um, I'll shuffle. I'll make some coffee. I'll journal. And I'll come on to Instagram and I'll talk to you guys. Anyways. So the cards that I pulled, and this really stands out to me the most, is Mary Magdalene. She really stands out to me always. She, if you know her story, she's about listening to her soul's calling, well, <laughs> listening to the, the divine, God's soul, uh, divine's calling over her life and her showing up and listening to that regardless of her circumstances, regardless of the challenges. She just showed up and she listened and she allowed it to change her life and her legacy forever and it was so meaningful and so impactful and so lasting. So this card says, the apostle to the apostles. She says, it says, I am the bridge between heaven and earth. I am fully human and fully divine. I love the fact that that's one of the first cards to jump out for us is the fact that we are allowed, like I said in the very beginning of this video, we are allowed, we are given permission and we are expected to be not only spiritual beings but also human beings. And we have to learn how to navigate both of those, those worlds. I was just talking about this in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, my online tarot community, where I was talking to them about the cross. They were asking me the meaning of the cross because we talk about esoteric symbolism, not just the tarot. Because esoteric symbolism is found within the tarot and all in our world. And that's what I, the information and the knowledge that I share with them. But it's the bridge between the spiritual, I'm sorry, the physical world, our human being experience, that's the one, and then the spiritual experience, the connection to heaven and earth. So that's what makes a cross, it's a crossroads. And you, we have to learn how to navigate through that, how to be human and how to be spiritual at the same time. In the meantime, we are encouraged to be compassionate and kind with ourselves as we're navigating through this because it is hard. The next thing, oh my God, I literally just said this. I'm not gonna say her name correctly, but I am here for it. <laughs> but she says, the joy permeated mother. That means she's soaking in joy. She's soaking in happiness. She's soaking in spiritual bliss. This means that it's the joy and the um, the divine happiness and love of, of the higher power, of God, of the divine, the universe, that is what she is soaking in. That's it. But she says, I am my own guru. That's literally what it is I said in the very beginning or middle of this video is you are your guru. You are your higher self. You have access to your higher, to higher wisdom. No one else. And as we're moving forward, each one of us is enlight, will be, oh my gosh, that's the next card, enlightened beings. Each one of us are enlightened beings. We have our own wisdom. 
I was teaching that in the Sacred Circle Channel School that one wisdom, one level of wisdom isn't more important or valuable than another level of wisdom. We see that in the maid, maiden, and crone. Each one of them are equally wise, just like the phases of the moon. Each one of them is equally important in the stages of your life. We all can gain, learn from each other and gain from each other. All right. I know the self that never changes. This means that regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how much you externally are changing or you mentally are changing, spiritually, you are love. Spiritually, there are certain things that are never going to change about you. That's not a bad thing. That's not a threat. That's a blessing. It's not about how you identify yourself or how you're known to be or how others know you to be or what you expect of yourself. No matter how much you consume, no matter how much you put out there, no matter how much you allow yourself to be consumed, there are certain areas of your life spiritually deep within you that can never be touched, that are always gonna be innocent, that are always gonna be pure, that are always gonna be protected and unadult unadulterated. That's where you're going back into. And when you access that, you will have access to joy Un, unknown to anything or not known unknown to anything but that you may not have known about that you may not know that you can feel that you didn't know that you could feel this good not by external things not by things that you know a, a person's love for you or your relationship or your purpose your service to others you're not defined by your work you're not defined by how you help people or how you allow other people to help you that can be a part of your journey that can be a part of your experience but it does not define you that's the part of you that will never change that's the part of you that will always remain the same that's the part of you that spirit the divine the higher higher God the higher wisdom holds on to and says I want you to come back to this this seed this little it's like a seed but it's infinite and then the last card is green Terra the Buddha of enlightened action so the Buddha in Buddha means enlightened person enlightened soul enlightened being that's you my soul my soul informs my every step I do what my heart compels me to do why because to your core your heart is this the connection to source and that's where spirit talks to you is through your heart don't get it don't get it twisted when something feels like to you, like, okay, well, just my heart is broken. A part of your ego, your identity, your perspective is broken. No one can take anything from you. No one can take love from you. You are love. No one can take abundance from you. You are abundant. You're abundantly filled with blessings, ideas, words, thoughts, knowledge, wisdom. All right. You are born with that it quality. That means only you can do what you do the way that you do it. Say no more. Everyone is doing their best. So that is so important too because I feel as though, again, we're so focused on becoming our best selves and self-love, self-healing, self-growth growth, breaking generational curses, wanting more for ourselves, realizing that we can have more for ourselves to the point where we become punishing of others who are not doing the same things, not moving the same way, to who, not, who don't rise up to our expectations, but realize that everyone is literally trying to do their best out here. We are all just walking ourselves home. We are all spiritual beings, again, in a, human in a human body. So we're meant to make mistakes. In that, you're meant to show up to others with grace, forgiveness, kindness, compassion, and love. And release all expectations of your relationship. And release all expectations of how you think it should be, how you think it should look. Because then you put a weight, a burden on it. And you don't allow someone to be free. They be, you expect them to be a slave to you and your expectations and you and how you want things to be and you and how they should show up for you. This is not only in their actions, it's in their presence. There are going to be people who you will lose. Not, not, that means that there are going to be people who you may not see in your life because the relationship is over and there may be people that you may not physically see with your eyes because they've passed on. But you have to forgive and you have to surrender to that 
to that expectation and to that anger and that sadness, the fact that they're not there for you in the way that you expected them to be there for you. Because they are there. You may not see it in the way that you expect your, expect your eyes to see it. You may not feel it in the way that you physically expect yourself to physically feel it or emotionally, but it is there. And the same thing that you're giving to others is the same energy that you need to give to yourself. Kindness, grace, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, space. Because you are also doing your best. And the last card is time for a love fest. If you can do all of the above, all of which I just named, it's, it's the vibration and the energy of love is going to permeate and be all throughout your experience, all throughout your moment, all throughout 2021 and the years to come. It'll be life-changing, believe me. It'll make a difference. And that's what's going to be a part of your legacy. All right, my loves. So I know I said a lot. I still want to know how it is that you're feeling. I, I do want to know, you know, how did you start this video feeling? How did you end this video feeling? Take time to journal it. Feel free to share it with the tribe, the Bahati Vibe Tribe. We're here, we're present. Um, but yeah, you know, I really want to encourage you to go to your, your space or if you don't have a space to define it. That means to create it and to commit to it, to recommit to it. As much as you would commit to your work, as much as you would commit to your children, as much as you would commit to your health and fitness plans, I see you, <laughs> whatever it is, um, commit to it and give to it every day and multiple times a day, if you can. But no judgment, but it'll be something that's important to your life. I can just feel it. Until then, you guys, I really wanna speak a blessing and love and strength and protection and clarity and connection over your life in a way that is undeniable and so clearly heard by you and so clearly felt by you. Um, I want 2021 and 20, the rest of 2020 to be a game changer in the best way possible. Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, of course, because I'm here. This is the way that you can have access to me and we could do it together because we are a tribe, we are a family. And in that, I will say, I will see you in my next video. I hope that you are well. Bye.